bringing it back to Earth. When it does, the capsule will splash down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California. And now, what do the Guardians of the Galaxy with Marvel Comics have anything in common to do with NASA's exploration of the galaxy? NASA's Greg Harlan has this. Joining us today at the Candy Space Center is Adia Bulawa and Serena Koff, who are going to share with us their winning prizes of the International Space Station's U.S. National Lab and Marvel Entertainment's Guardian of the Galaxy Challenge. Adia, tell me a little bit about your project. Uh, what my project is going to study is the strength of UV light dental glue in space. Nice. Serena? My project is looking at the behavior of aeroponic farms in microgravity. That's pretty interesting. So what got you involved in this experiment? Um, my mom did as uh, we were growing up. She always got um, NASA emails, which inspired all of us to enter the challenges. Nice. And how about you? I got this recommendation from my teacher in my engineering class after we'd been involved with NASA Hunt. That goes to show you that young people are making an impact, helping solve problems, and allowing NASA to get astronauts into deep space. NASA's Greg Harlan, thank you for that. And now we are just seven minutes away from launch. I want to send it over to the Mission Directors Center where Joshua Santora is standing by to take us through the rest of the countdown all the way to launch. Joshua, take it away. Thanks, Daryl. Yes, we still are on time for our liftoff at 1.16.16 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we are looking to hear for a call that the engines have begun chilling. We heard kind of a rundown of what's going to happen, some of the highlights from Alex. Um, so things that are coming up here as you're viewing the Falcon and Dragon there on the pad uh, at seven minutes to go, the Dragon will switch to inter internal power and those, those engines will begin to chill. Uh, at five minutes to go, the RP-1 or rocket propellant one should be done fueling the first stage. Um, and then in around the, the four minute timeline, we'll be seeing there's actually a clamp up there at the top of the Falcon, just below the Dragon that will release, and the strong back or transport erector will tilt back a couple degrees, uh, maintaining contact with the umbilicals, the, the place where the fluid and power and telemetry and other things are provided to the rocket until we get to liftoff. Uh, and then at three minutes to go, we will have the, the completion of the liquid oxygen being fueled into the first tank. Um, we'll also have thrust vector control and then we'll hear calls for the range being go at about two minutes. And then at one minute, the Falcon will be in startup mode. We'll also hear the command flight computer do a final pre-launch checks, uh, which includes uh, validating the automated flight termination system, uh, which is part of the range. So we talk about the range uh, and they are ultimately responsible for ensuring public safety. So this includes people being in the physical area as well as people being out over the water where the rocket will launch. Uh, and then even in the event that the rocket were to go off course, making sure that, that it's not going to harm anyone, um, which is what that flight termination system is all about. But we don't anticipate needing that today. At about 45 seconds to go, we will hear from Mike Taylor, the SpaceX launch director. He'll give a final go for launch. In the last few seconds, we'll see water very intentionally flood the launch pad. Uh, that you're seeing there on your screen now. And that acts to serve to help cool things as the the heat from launch um, is, is a very intense process, as well as suppressing the sound. The sound can be a very violent and disruptive thing. And so the water helps to really kind of uh, mer uh, quiet those those noises. There at, th at the Falcon 9, you're watching as it's venting gaseous oxygen. That's very much anticipated uh, as we actually fill those first and second stages with cryogenic fuel liquid oxygen, densified liquid oxygen on the uh, on the order of negative 330 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Uh, very, very cold on Earth in its natural state, that's a gas. And so because we're they're filling it with, with liquid oxygen, its tendency is to shift back into a gas. It's why they fuel so close to liftoff, um, because they want to have as much fuel on board as possible, have it be as cold as possible to allow as much thrust and lifting power as possible. Great arms, opening for strong back retract. There you hear the calls for the strong back to retract. And if you watch closely, it's only going to tip back a couple degrees right now. But you can see if you're, if you're watching closely. The, the Dragon being used today is actually a flight proven Dragon. This will be its second trip to the International Space Station. Its first was back in March of 2017 as part of the Commercial Resupply Services 10 mission. MVAC TVC motions are complete. 
This Falcon is a brand new Falcon. Uh, SpaceX has said that they will discontinue repainting flight-proven boosters. And so because this one has that nice, uh, beautiful finish on it, we know that this is a brand new one. They will be attempting to land this booster back here at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. That's always a secondary objective to delivering the payload successfully into its orbit, wherever it is intended to go. There we hear the validation that the strongback is in position. Again, all things go for launch. Techni no technical issues that are being uh, worked or of great issue. The weather looks good. The only real concern was those ground level winds and those have remained calm. They're, they're slightly calming right now. So still definitely some wind, but not as, as windy as it was earlier this morning. The Dragon has two main uh, compartments that they're able to store cargo in. There's the pressurized portion, which is what you might traditionally think of as being a capsule. There's about 11 cubic meters of space, uh, 30, 388 cubic feet, which if you have an eight foot tall room, it's approximately four and a half feet wide by 10 feet long, just to give you a rough idea. Beneath that pressurized space is an unpressurized storage space that's known as the trunk. It holds about 14 cubic meters or 494 cubic feet. Uh, again, an eight foot tall room would be about 10 feet long and six feet wide, just to give you a, a feeling of how, how big that space is. Again, destined for, the, destined for the International Space Station with a planned berthing Saturday morning. The space station is actually headed this way uh, from Australia. It's uh, fly, flying over the oceans south of Australia as we speak and headed this way again. Uh, the Dragon will hopefully, will plan to intercept that Saturday morning. Vehicles on internal power. They're a great call. Vehicle on internal power. Things progressing. Ground gas close up starting. There you see, there you see uh, the amount of gaseous oxygen that's venting increasing. This is as the tank gets to that really full point that they're just making sure that the pressurization and the temperatures are exactly where they need to be. Ground gas close up's complete. Dragon is in startup. Their dragon is in, startup. is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Stage 2, press for flight. Go for launch. And there's that call, the go for launch call from Launch Director for SpaceX, Mike Taylor. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And liftoff as Falcon 9 and Cargo Dragon take flight, bound for the International Space Station with fresh supplies and research, helping to maintain our human presence in space as the station celebrates its 20th anniversary. We expect a small throttle back in the engines as the vehicle enters max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure. So we hear that call for max Q, as well as the vehicle now entering supersonic. Engines are back up to power. That max Q result of still passing through the atmosphere while the speed is 
drastically increasing. In about a minute, we're going to see a number of actions happen in very rapid succession. Yeah, chill. At about 2.23, we're going to see the main engines cut off. At about 2.26, the first stage will separate and fall away to head back here to the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. At 2.33, the second stage engine will ignite that Merlin vacuum engine. And at 2.39, the first stage will initiate its boost back burn to return here. There we have main engine cutoff. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. And confirm first stage step. Stage one boost back start ignition. There we have a boost back burn. The second stage has ignited. The first stage's main objective is really to get the, the Dragon spacecraft out of the atmosphere, which it has succeeded in doing. The second stage is now into its mission to deliver the Dragon into its specific orbit. What you're seeing on screen right now is our tracking cameras really working to follow that first stage back as it returns to the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Stage one boost back shutdown. So the boost back burn is complete. There are a, at least a couple more burns required to get that first stage back down here to the Earth, which we'll keep a close eye on. Stage two is following the nominal trajectory. Acquisition of signal at Bermuda. We just heard a great call, the second stage there, nominal trajectory. And there you can see on screen, that is a, a view looking at the engine for the second stage. There's a really beautiful shot looking back where you can see the Earth. The cameras are switching there on opposite sides of the second stage looking at that engine. So just a quick look at the actions that are coming up. We have a, a few more minutes of the second stage uh, burning, and then it will shut down, and then we'll see spacecraft separation. And then a moment or two later, we will see the solar arrays stage on two the continues Dragon to the nominal trajectory. Acquisition in New Hampshire. So as you're seeing, uh, again, everything so far proceeding as expected, what we refer to as nominal, uh, which is everything we, we, we would like to see today. Uh, but there's still a good bit of work yet to be done, um, but a lot under our belts. So Daryl, we're going to actually go back to you, and this is going to be me signing off from the Mission Director Center. Uh, thanks for being with me, and uh, we'll see you next time. Joshua Santora, live in the Mission Control Center. Thank you for taking us through the launch. And as the rocket continues uh, to fall now, we are now going to switch gears and monitor the Dragon spacecraft's journey to the International Space Station, but also 
get this exciting moment for this mission, and that's the return of SpaceX's booster to landing zone one, which is just about 10 miles to the southeast of where I am located here at the Kennedy Space Center. Let's bring in Alex Siegel of SpaceX back in. He's out in California at the company's headquarters to show us the landing and talk about reflying that Dragon spacecraft. Alex. Thank you, Daryl. Now, uh, for those of you just joining us, we may have said it before, but this is SpaceX's 20, 20th launch of 2018, and we're launching a flight-proven Dragon spacecraft today, which visited the International Space Station once before for our CRS-10 mission all the way back in March of 2017. You can hear some applause behind us as everything is going great. Uh, both Falcon 9 and Dragon were designed with reflight in mind, so the vehicle hardware is built to support multiple missions with minimal refurbishment in between. And while this Dragon has flown once before, the booster we're flying today is actually brand new. And in just a few moments, we'll be bringing that first stage back to land at Landing Zone 1 at Cape Canaveral so that it can fly again on future missions. Now, in order to make its way back to the landing zone, the first stage executes a series of three burns. The first is a boost back burn, which helps to slow the rocket down horizontally. Shortly after this burn is initiated, the grid fins, which you can see right on your screen, uh, located near the top of the first stage, are deployed and they help guide the rocket during descent. Following the boost back burn, Falcon 9 executes a re-entry burn to slow itself down before hitting the dense part of the atmosphere. Let's watch the action for a moment. So right now we're looking at the second stage and you're looking at that MVAC-D engine, which is our Merlin vacuum engine, which only operates in space. Now it looks like, uh, as you guys saw a little bit earlier, that the first stage might not be hitting its target, but the second stage is still heading right there. It says, if you guys can hear the cheering in the background from my team members, it seems that the uh, first stage has made a water landing, uh, which uh, again is not the primary mission here. We still have the Dragon capsule headed to the International Space Station. Uh, it is a bummer that we weren't able to capture and uh, re-land the first stage, but again, not our primary mission, so we are still on track to complete this mission. We're going to go back to talking about our primary mission, and again, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the MVAC-D or Merlin vacuum engine uh, you see on your screen. The burn it looks like it has fully cut off and we'll wait for the nets to confirm that we've had official second engine cutoff. Still waiting for that call out from the nets, so let's give it a few seconds. We just got confirmation on good orbit, so that is great news. Up next, we've got Dragon separation from the top of that second stage, which will get a, give us a glimpse inside Dragon's trunk. Uh, as mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Dragon carries cargo both inside the capsule, which is referred to as pressurized cargo, and in its trunk, referred to as unpressurized cargo. And it looks like we have clean separation. You can see inside the trunk right there. What a beautiful shot. With Dragon deployed, the next major milestone will be deployment of the solar arrays as Dragon makes its way to the International Space Station. It's going right back to you, Daryl. Thank you, guys. All right, Alex Siegel live in Hawthorne, California. Thank you. As he mentioned, there was a bit of an issue with the booster, but Dragon is well on its way to the station right now, still looking for a confirmation of solar ray deployment. Let's check now back with Gary Jordan out in Houston, Texas at Johnson Space Center. Gary. Thank you, Darrell. We're uh, seeing the views now of the confirmation of that separation.
The next milestone will be when the solar arrays themselves are deployed. Once they're deployed, uh, it'll provide power to the Dragon over this next two and a half days that it'll be orbiting the Earth to rendezvous with the International Space Station. Once it does, this is scheduled for Saturday morning and is captured by the station's robotic arm. The, it will share power with the station itself until it's berthed uh, a few hours later, again looking at uh, Saturday. The view you're seeing now is a view of the Dragon spacecraft in orbit. You can see some of the tracking. The station itself at the time of launch was 261 statute miles over the south or just south of uh, Australia. Soon we'll be seeing uh, some views, one of the cameras on the Dragon that will actually show us the solar array deployment. In the meantime, we'll stand by for confirmation of that milestone. You can see the Dragon spacecraft being tracked over the uh, North Atlantic Ocean. Space Station in the meantime tracking 263 statute miles uh, over the South Pacific Ocean just east off the coast of New Zealand. This is part of the two orbit rendezvous profile. And it looks like we have a good solar array deployment. Solar arrays are now in motion. Once fully deployed, the uh, solar arrays will begin collecting power. Again, the, that will provide power to the Dragon spacecraft over the next approximately day and a half, a little bit longer, until the capture to the International Space Station. Expected loss of signal, Bermuda. And this is as SpaceX PC, flies Alexander again Alpha. over the North Atlantic Ocean, the International Space Station just behind it, 263 statute miles, currently over the South Pacific Ocean of New Zealand. We have uh, solar array deployment, getting good views here from Mission Control Houston. So again, with the successful deployment of those solar arrays, Dragon will be uh, using those to collect power from the sun as it continues to orbit the Earth for the next two and a half days, uh, looking for rendezvous to the International Space Station early Saturday morning. At the time of launch, the crew of the, in of the uh, International Space Station, the Expedition 57 crew, were in the middle of some tasks working on their spacesuits, but also double um, multitasking and uh, watching a little bit of the launch along the way. They're excited to uh, for the fi oh, more than 5,600 pounds of cargo to be arriving here shortly. Again, included in that is more than 2,300 pounds of science, some of which were described uh, during the launch broadcast today. We have successful deployment of the solar arrays, and well, that will uh, toss it back to Daryl over at the uh, Kennedy Space Center. Everything's looking good from here in Mission Control, Houston.
Gary Jordan, thank you. Live from Houston, Texas, we appreciate you taking us through that. And for more updates on the launch and the mission, you can go to nasa.gov slash station or nasa.gov slash SpaceX. That's going to do it for us. I'm Daryl Nail, and from everyone here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, we appreciate you joining us for the successful launch and the mission that is going to take the cargo spacecraft to the International Space Station. We're going to leave you now with another look at today's launch and remind you to keep looking up. Have a great day, everyone. All right, 15 seconds. And Falcon 9 is configured for flight. 9, 8, eight 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, zero. And liftoff as Falcon 9 and Cargo Dragon take flight, bound for the International Space Station with fresh supplies and research, helping to maintain our human presence in space as the station celebrates its 20th anniversary.